Are you a kettlebell beginner and you want to train 30 days for free with powerful workouts that give you a lot of bang for your buck? I got something for you. Check the first link in the description, click it, sign up, and enjoy. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag here. Only real kettlebell professionals know this hack, which I'm about to share with you right now in this video. We talk about the kettlebell effect. Pavel Tatsulin also refers to this effect as the what the hell effect. This here is an excerpt from my live stream where I talk about it in detail. Here's the distilled version and you're gonna learn something. So buckle up and enjoy. So what is the what the hell effect as it pertains to kettlebell training? Now, let me be clear. I don't like this description, it implies that there is a surprise. I do understand that back in the days when Pavel came up with this term, that it wasn't widely experienced for that matter. But now we have progressed. Now we are in a different era. That is the reason why I call it the kettlebell effect. Now the kettlebell effect is a byproduct of proper and regular kettlebell training. And let me stop right there. What do I mean with proper kettlebell training? Mostly ballistic exercises such as the swing, the clean, the snatch, or the jerk. I believe this effect on this phenomenon will crystallize itself after longer periods of time. What I'm trying to sell you and what I'm trying to share with you and what I'm gonna give you is training that you will do until you are six feet under. That's why I consider it a regular type of activity. So the result of this phenomenon, this byproduct of proper and regular kettlebell training, entails two possible scenarios. It equips you, the practitioner, with a newly acquired skill that you didn't even train for. Number two, it enables the practitioner, you, to surpass previous achievements and metrics of human performance. For example, you now can do an exercise you weren't able to do before, such as a pistol squat. Maybe your deadlift went up. We've heard this a lot, now I'm able to lift more. Maybe your running speed increased. You used to be the tail light in your group and now you're running front and center or even in the pole position. But why is that? I think it lies in the ballistic element of kettlebell training. What now follows, what I'm gonna to present to you is my personal theory based upon the findings of Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky, which is a Russian sports scientist. I've read two of his books. Just for you to understand, Yuri Verkhoshansky pioneered plyometric training. Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky says we can divide resistance exercises into two groups. We have group number one, exercises in which the working force is developed after preliminary muscular tension. This sounds very fancy, but it's easy. Imagine a heavy deadlift with a barbell. You have the barbell set in front of you. You have 200 kgs on it. You are about to test your PR, your personal record. You grab the barbell and you build tension. You get ready to lift. This is what we call preliminary muscular Tension. Let's jump into group number two. These are exercises, listen closely, in which the working force is developed from zero or from the inertia of a falling object. Now imagine a kettlebell swing or even better, a kettlebell snatch, right? We pull the kettlebell between our legs into the backswing. Then we hip thrust the kettlebell forward. The kettlebell starts flying. I pull it overhead approximately at shoulder level and then I fixate the kettlebell in the so-called top fixation. Now when I drop it, I let gravity do its thing. And what happens? I am not building preliminary tension. I wait for the arm to reconnect with my body. And as soon as the arm makes contact with the body, my muscles have to react from Zero. The main difference between these groups of exercises, picture in your mind, we have the heavy deadlift on one side, we have the snatch on the other side. The main difference between these two is that the first group, the heavy deadlift group, does not provoke an appreciable influence on the so-called muscle excitation tension link. Consequently, depending upon the amount of weight or the training modality used, conditions 
In the first group, which is the heavy deadlift, think about the heavy deadlift, are created chiefly for the development of muscular strength. And I think we can all agree on this, right? Stronger with a heavy deadlift, a heavy squat, a heavy bench, and this is awesome. Do not conflate or do not think that I'm saying one group is better than the other. But here it comes. The deadlift does not develop the speed with which the muscles switch from the non-active to the active state. And now let's consider the four tenets of strength because you want to understand this and on a deeper level. We have, for example, force is mass times acceleration or how much energy can you put into an object? How much can I squeeze that thing, right? This is force. Work is force times distance. So in other words, how far can I effectively move that object? It's not just how much energy can I put into it, but how much energy can I put into this object and move it? Power is work divided by time. So that means how much energy can I squeeze into a given unit of time or into the shortest amount possible? Now let's focus on power. For example, a power snatch, right? You have these 200 kilograms on the barbell on the floor. Now you wanna bring this monster overhead. This is power. You have to act quickly. Nobody's doing a power snatch like this. Uh, because the weight is going to crush you. The conditions of the muscular work in the first group, the heavy deadlift, remember the heavy deadlift, have the potential to develop muscular strength. We know this, right? So a heavy deadlift builds strength. Yes, we got this. This is the first group. The conditions of the muscular work in the second group, what does this build? Dynamic strength, speed of movement, and chiefly starting strength. And what is starting strength? It is simple. Instantaneous development of muscular tension, quick and fast, is due to the extra mobilization of latent motor resources. This develops starting strength. And what is starting strength? Explosiveness. And these are exercises from the second group. The snatch, the jerk, the swing, the clean. If we have conditions where strength resists the weight of a load, you build strength. When strength is directed against the load's force of inertia, the kettlebell, as it drops between your legs, this stimulates the speed of muscular contraction, your power. Ballistic kettlebell exercises, now this is my opinion now, my theory, belong into the second group of exercises, according to Yuri Verkhoshansky, where strength is directed against the load's force of inertia. This stimulates power development. I just showed you a, a, a or a, taught you or I explained a principle or an example of the double jerk. And I'm gonna give you a real life example about this and I see this with our clients in the gym. It takes them a couple of milliseconds until they are able to tense their bodies. Why? Because their latent motor resources haven't been fully recruited yet. Why are we experiencing the kettlebell effect? And here is the point. Most people who work out, and I'm not talking about the kettlebell community. I'm not talking about you and me. I'm talking about most people who work out on this planet Earth, which is what? 1% or one, even smaller than 1%, right? 99% of people do not really train on a regular basis. And those that do, that's not us. We are a small minority. We are a niche. Most people go to the gym, right? So what do they engage in? A chest press, a row, a lat pull, a leg press, and God forbid some free weight exercises. So what are you doing? You resist the weight of the load all the time. So you are engaging in the first group of exercises. Now, if we only engage into one realm, what happens? What is the logical conclusion? It leaves the realm of power development untouched because you always do the first group of exercises and you never engage into any ballistic exercises at all. Because why? Well, we can talk about the why for a second because they're advanced and you need a coach to show you how to do stuff. And here it comes. As people start developing this lost realm of human performance through ballistic kettlebell exercises, they experience a new superpower. And this is the quintessential definition of the kettlebell effect. The reason why this effect is there is because it is potential that you have never touched. This potential was always there, but the kettlebell 
open up this can of worms, Pandora's box of really developing this type of new superpower. Yes, we can talk about athletes. Well, athletes do that all the time. Yes, but most people are not athletes. And that's why you see, I see this all the time in the gym and I see it all from you guys on, on the YouTube, on Insta, on everywhere. I can do stuff I wasn't able to do before. I'm now able to run in, 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 the, in the primary, in, in the in the pole position with my group because you have now unlocked a new potential of human development. Let's take a deep dive even further into Dr. Yuri Verkhoshansky. He based his findings, the stuff that I'm sharing with you right now, which I have to admit and I have to say this, I'm just touching his findings on an incredibly superficial basis. He developed a method out of his findings that he calls the shock method. And the shock method includes plyometric exercises such as depth jumps and research from other coaches such as Pavel as well as countless anecdotal evidence provides me enough evidence to believe that the kettlebell has a similar if not even better effect on the body than depth jumps because jumping as we all know is something that isn't easy you might be thinking well that's easy no it's not people really have to understand how to jump especially doing depth jumps where you jump from a higher entity or from a higher distance down catch the weight and then jump back again this is this is big stuff i'd rather have you do a hand-to-hand -hand swing way less effects on the joints way less problems easier to learn and you probably get the same potential out of it and now here's a real world example of the kettlebell effect now we have a lot of real world examples like hey i was able to deadlift more stuff i was able to run faster now i'm able to walk without breathing uh, <laughs> without getting out of breath and stuff and, and these are all real world examples i'm not trying to diminish the importance of of these aspects and facets of real world examples but there's one thing where i have seen or where I think I'm connecting the dots of power development. Now, a good friend of Angie broke her wrist because of her dog. How did this happen? She was walking with her dog. She also, have a, she also has a English Staffordshire Bull Terrier, like Gypsy, and his name is Chapo. She was walking with Chapo, her little Staffy. He saw another dog on the other side and she was walking with him and they, they were, I think, got in close contact or whatever. So she kept walking and all of a sudden, Chapo, the little Staffy, pulls on the leash with so much velocity and aggression that it broke her wrist. And one thing that you have to understand about Staffies is our boy Gypsy, he's 22 kg weight. That's a lot of weight on a small frame, a lot of dog on a small frame. He's very close to the ground, so he's very aerodynamic. And if he digs himself into the ground, you have a hard time picking the boy up or directing him. My staff, Gypsy, will never be able to accomplish this in my case. Why? Because my reactive ability and power development to switch my muscles from the non-active to the active state, if he pulls and I'm able to pop, catch him, is properly developed. Doesn't mean that I'm not maybe injuring or spraining my muscle, but I'm not breaking something because my muscles are able to react quickly. And of course, in an emergency, it might be that the muscle takes some damage as a in, a, in the fallout. And that led me to believe that the kettlebell effect is fall prevention. So not only does the kettlebell build muscle, it's soft on the joints, it's great for your cardiovascular health. Not only do you have an own gym, not only is it simple and easy to understand, not only doesn't it require a lot, a lot of space, it also builds your health in a way where you can say, listen, grandpa, if you pick up the kettlebell and you keep working with it, this is probably the best way to prevent you from falling. Because what happens if you trip? Your muscles have to react quickly and fast. And if your power isn't developed properly, you will fall and you will hurt yourself. Now here's the next step that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share it with your friends, and then watch this video right here. This is where I talk about power development, the kettlebell effect in detail. This was from our live stream and you have to watch it if you want to take a more detailed approach. So go watch it right now.